All right, thank you all for being here. Um, start talking about the game from last Thursday night. I uh, never experienced a, a loss like that. Um, and, and I said this after the game, and uh, some of you guys used it against me in headline, but, I mean, the game should have never came down to a Hail Mary. And uh, I felt strongly about that right after the contest and even more so after watching it four or five times. You know, um, shit never came down to that, but it did. Um, and uh, talk about the last play for a second. We had a regular defense in um, because we knew they had two plays. Um, we have a last play grouping. We didn't put it in. Um, we didn't practice it last week, mostly because we had some injuries in it. Uh, quit using offensive guys. Um, really, I guess, several years ago, if you remember when the Patriots had Gronkowski, Gronkowski out there, I think the Dolphins beat them. And, uh, and so just kind of took that and kept defensive guys out there. And um, our best defensive guys are our best vertical guys right now anyway. Um, and bottom line, we didn't execute. If I had to do anything over again, um, which um, is we were just pressured. We'd have pressured. We three-man rushed it. Um, probably would have brought five. But, you know, that's, that's kind of that's what it was. Um, Houston really deserved to win the game. Uh, we didn't play very well. Um, play extremely poor on defense and special teams. And a lot of the same guys um, lost our way. You know, the reasons why we were successful, um, you know, during that four-game winning streak was because we played really disciplined football. We didn't beat ourselves. We didn't have a whole lot of penalties. We didn't turn it over, um, play extremely hard, and we were tough on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And those are a lot of the same reasons why we didn't win this game. Um, you know, we, we didn't play discipline. We probably had eight penalties called, and I could have I could have 12 or 14 probably should have been called in the game on us. Um, you know, I thought Houston was hungrier, um, and I thought they won both sides of the line of scrimmage, which um, if that's going to be the case, then we're going to struggle to win any game. Um, but they ran the ball for almost six yards of carry. We ran the ball for under four. Um and and I thought that they they did that. And so when you recap the game, special teams, uh, our core guys, we got a bunch of core guys that are starters on two or more teams. They didn't play very well. Uh, that's their role. They didn't play very well. Um, not good. Not good enough overall. First time we lost a field position battle all year. Uh, we lost it by a lot. Uh, starts with that kickoff. We go up three to nothing. They return the kickoff. Go uh, uh, and what what happened? We got guys all off our landmarks. I mean, we just we had three guys right at the point of attack that are not where they should be. Uh, we don't bully blocks, meaning we don't put our hands on people's chests and drive them back. And then we had two guys just miss, just completely whiff. And, and the kid's good, um, and he took it to the house. Um, but we had some some poor kick locations. Um, the ball wasn't in the air long enough, and we weren't on our landmarks. Uh, punt, you know, Ali really struggled. Uh, probably his worst game in two years. Um, our hang times were not there. And then, you know, gave up the biggest return I think we've had in two years, which 11. You know, they returned one, which they had three or four blocks in the back, but we didn't cover that one very well either. Um, but we missed two tackles right at the point of contact. Should have had them down for negative yardage, which we've done several times this year. Um, our punt return, we just lost a bunch of one-on-ones. It's been one of our better teams. Um, when we've given Preston an opportunity to, to do something with it, he's done something with it. And we gave him no chance of the night. And just we lined up wrong, um, we, and we just got beat. We got beat one-on-ones. Their gunners beat us time and time again. Gave, gave Preston no chance. Then on kickoff return, we missed opportunities. Our returner didn't see it. We blocked. That's probably the best we blocked on that team. And we had two should have been uh, returns that should have started above the 40, and we didn't. Um, and so we got to be better there. But that's kind of special teams. Defensively, our best players didn't play very well. You know, and I think anytime, regardless of sport, when your best players don't play very well, you're going to struggle. And our best players didn't didn't play good enough. Um, by by far, the worst performance of the year. I think it starts with poor fundamentals. You know, our pad level was high. Um, we didn't shed blocks. We missed a lot of tackles. Um, we needed to dominate with the front six, and, and we didn't. You know, um, our pass coverage wasn't good enough. Our, and I talked about this after the game. Our our zone drops were off. We did not hit. We gave up way too many you know, easy completions. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with underneath defenders. We just didn't got, get to our spots. Um, 
And so that was poor. And then they scored touchdowns on five out of, out of their last seven drives. And the longest one, I think, was six plays maybe. And so um, – and we had zero takeaways. So just – Absolutely wasn't good enough. You know, we had a couple couple people that, that I thought did a good job. You know, Tommy played pretty decent. Fatorma continues to give us some good snaps. Um, but that was about it. And uh, and so just wasn't good enough on defense. Offensively, it's the best game. Um, it's really what I thought we could be, you know, when we got all our pieces together. Um, I thought Garrett was special. He can, and, and, and we will build off that. He uh, – I thought Cole and Devin did a lot of good things. CJ was better. Uh, disappointed how we played up front. Um, and we didn't have two starters, but we don't deal with excuses around here. We just weren't good enough. In, we were pretty good in pass pro, but just not good enough in the run game on at the offensive line position or the tight end position. Um, and just a lot of missed opportunities in the first half. And so um, – Felt like we could have put the game away or put it in the second and third quarter. We had opportunities. Didn't do it on offense. And so, um, but yeah, people talk about the last play, but we had plenty of opportunities to win that game before it, before it should ever got to that point, and we did not. And so that's where we're at. You know, we're 2-1 and one in the conference now. We're 4-2 we're and two and flip the page, you know. And I'm looking forward to it. We got started today, and, and I'm going to talk about that game. I'm going to answer the questions, and then – I'm not going to talk about it the rest of the time. We're moving forward, and uh, Tony will have to come up with some new material as we move through the week, and he and I do our stuff because I'm 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 done after this press conference, and so um, um, we're going we're going to learn from it and 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 move on. And so with that, uh, we'll turn we'll flip the page over to Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State's one of the the hottest teams in the in the country, and I, and I really credit uh, Coach Gundy and his staff. They had a low point; they get beat at home by South Alabama. And South's got a bunch of good athletes, um, but they've rebounded well. They went up to Ames, lost a close game, took a bye week, and off that bye week, they've won two games versus ranked opponents. Played both of them at home, and uh, you can tell during that bye week is they went back and, and really simplified what they were doing on offense and defense. Um, but just really impressed with the with the turnaround they've made, and you can tell they're playing with a lot of uh, a lot of confidence right now. I think offensively, when you look at them, they they're focused on running the football. And uh, that's something they didn't do a whole lot early. They settled on a quarterback. You know, he uh, – this kid's been through the – he's been through the the the, uh, the league. He's uh, he's experienced. Uh, Bowman's been at Texas Tech and had some really good success. And um, he, he's settled down and he's playing well. He's throwing the ball better in the last couple of weeks. I think the difference for them has been Ollie Gordon at, at running back. You know, he was special last week. And and he's a tough tackle. Runs as hard as anybody in our league. They're getting him the ball in the pass game. They've got two outside receivers that can go. Um, and then the Presley kid who's been been good for several years now. Uh, they're doing a good job getting him the ball in a bunch of different creative ways. And their O line is, is playing better. They've they've had the same group they've they've played and and they're playing considerably better. I think they've reduced the number of things they're asking them to do, and they've gotten better. Um, Defensively, when you look at them, it's a three-down front um, and three safeties. And if you look at them, they've made a lot of progress. And I think it starts with how they're playing up front. They've got really good length, and they're playing fundamental football. They're playing with really good hands. Um, they're getting off the ball. Uh, it's a simple as far as how they're lining up. Um, and then at linebacker, I think this may be the most talented group across the board that we've played, you know, and, and Penn State had some good guys, don't get me wrong, but this group across the board can really can really play. Uh, everything funnels, funnels to their middle safety. Uh, the Daniels kid, he's really good. Um, and then I think at corner, it's going to be a, it'll be a tough match for us. We're going to have to do better than, and get people's hands off of us better than we did the other night. Um, and then special teams, they've done a good job on special teams for a long time. They've always had really good specialists there. If you think about it, over Coach Gundy's tenure, they've always been really good um, on on special teams, especially at their specialist positions. Same thing this year. They've got uh, Presley as their punt and their kickoff returner. Um, we're going to have to really cover on him. And their field goal kicker and their kickoff guy have done a nice job. So we've got our hands full. I'm looking forward to kind of getting back to work. Our team, our guys will respond. They they understand that what we put on tape wasn't good enough and looking forward to Saturday. Great. So start with your injury situations. Any chance you get? Yeah, I think Wyatt will be back. back. Yeah, I feel I feel confident that Wyatt will be back. He just needs to get through another day or so. And, and I feel confident with that. Um, Burke's practice today in a limited 
basis. And so hopefully he'll progress and be available. Uh, I think Tomas is probably more likely versus UCF. Um, but I think that would be the earliest would be the UCF for, for Tomas. A couple others. And then you mentioned Tree Austin Cave. Has it played any chance you get him anytime soon? And then Justin Johnson didn't make the trip this week. Yeah, Justin was sick. He missed all weekend because of, of an illness. And Tariq's got to get healthy. He hadn't practiced today. He's practiced like two days, you know, maybe since fall camp. How do you, the emotions of a, a, a tough loss. Do you think the team dwells on it? How do they put it behind them? Well, it, it's a Thursday night, so it's a little bit different, right? And uh, so you have a little bit more time. And so I think you go through um, you go through phases. And, and – you know, I don't want to make too much of it, but I don't want to minimize it either. Like, there's 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 real shit going on, like real tough stuff going on. That, and I, so I'm not trying to put a football game up to it. You know, you can turn on the news and, and figure that out. But, um, but I don't want to minimize it either because we put a, a ton of time and there's a ton of investment into it. So, when you lose, when you lose in that fashion, man, it matters. And and so first thing is you gotta. There's a little bit of a grieving process that goes through. You know, and I think it's it's helpful because we had a little bit more time. And so you go through the grieving process. And then once you go through the grieving process, there's, there's this period where you got to take ownership for what is ours. And there's a lot, and listen, credit, credit Houston. That's the best they've played. They played extremely hard. They were hungry. They made the play at the end of the game to win it. And so I'm not minimizing them by any means, but we lost the game. We lost the game and it didn't, we didn't lose the game just on that one. There was a, I can go through probably 15 and that's what I did earlier this morning is I went through about 15 plays on offense where we lost the game, went through about 20 plays on defense and about six on special teams where we lost the game. And, um, and so you, then you go through the ownership and then it's about the response, you know, so there's processes to it. And so we went through the ownership today and now we're going to deal with the response. And so our response is, you know, that's why we're in, we're in the teaching business. Right. And uh, I think, you know, I, I would assume that Coach Gundy and that crew went through the similar process after that loss to South, and they've come out of it pretty good on the other side. And now it's up to our guys. we got to go through it. And, you know, I think you can't control what happens all the time, and uh, but you can control your response. So our response is we better fight, and we better put better stuff on tape or it's going to be a long year. So you mentioned Devin Carter. Is that what you kind of expect when you guys went out and got him? Yeah, yeah. And, and he probably left 60 yards out on the field. You know, he uh, – you know, there's two big balls that he had a chance at. Uh, but, yeah, we moved him. We played him more inside this game, and I think that's a better fit for him. Um, but, yeah, he had some big plays, man. Had a couple really strong runs after the catch, blocked on the perimeter, um, and we put him at the point of contact a lot. Um, but, yes, I think I think he can build off that. I really do. And, and we need him to have those type of games. Like, our past game, that was by far the best it's looked. Um, we kind of opened it up, too. Um, but he made a lot of that stuff happen. Eddie, Eddie Lee talked a lot about, I think he even literally said that he felt mentally the defense was still in the bye week. In retrospect, because we talked a lot about this in the past, do you look at like practices before the game, leading up to the game? Can you say like that's an accurate assessment? Do you disagree with that? No, I think I think you evaluate everything. You know, when something doesn't go well, you evaluate everything. And so we played really well on defense for four weeks in a row. And we played the opposite of that on Saturday. Okay, um, so whatever the opposite is really good, that's what we play, all right? Um, and so, you know, I think you evaluate everything. So what what I probably did a poor job of is I, uh, I didn't measure our level of maturity as, as well as I should have um, because we played those really physical games and I gave our guys some time off and we'd have, we did not deal very well with unstructured. And so um, – you know, I think when you go back, because that's what you do, that's what I do as a leader of it. You know, I'm responsible for it all. So first thing I do is is self-reflect and, and look through what I should have done different, okay? And the first things that come to mind are is should have handled the bye week a little different, you know? Um, probably should have stuck with our original plan, which is to practice hard on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and because of some injuries and kind of where our team was, we didn't. And I think you always look back and say, okay, all right, if I, if I could go back, and you make notes and you don't repeat the same mistake. You know, along those lines, um, how much do you go back and look at situational stuff that you, maybe you never really even need, like an onside kicks or Hail Mary stuff, you know, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the play and the personnel, and again, you may never need it, but 
seems like yeah. the time to, to circle back if you do check everything, right? Yeah, I think I think it's like um, either you or Bob asked me this question back in fall camp. It was about we were going in our first game, and you're, somebody asked – I think it was one of you two guys was asking, like, what's your biggest concern or whatever? And I said, like, your biggest concern is you don't cover everything, you know? Like, and there's so many things that happen in our game from a situational, you know, it, 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 there's a lot. There's a lot to cover. Um, and so, yeah, I think you go back – and for us, it was a really odd situation. I think there was – seven seconds ago, which you knew you had a chance for two two plays, right? Um, and so there's a lot of different things that people can do. They can throw the outcut like like they did. You can also do the the hook and ladder play. And when you do the hook and ladder play, you gotta make sure you're balanced and you gotta you gotta make sure that you still have pursuit lanes and those things. Um, and so um, we do a lot of Hail Mary practice. Um, but we'd usually do it in a one play sequence, you know, where there's a dead ball, um, where you got an opportunity. And so, yeah, I think you reevaluate. Yeah. So like for sure, like moving forward, we'll have to practice that with two play series, you know, and you, you look, you live and learn. And it's like I told our guys, like um, basically what I told them, told you, at, or I told you all at the opening of the, the deal, I told our guys too is, is like, hey, if I had to do that situation over again, pretty open about it, like we'd have, we'd have pressured and we'd have made him get the ball off faster. Um, but I think you go into any game, there's things that you would have done different and you try to be transparent with your players. We didn't execute that play, um, but I could have had them better prepared too. And so um, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I think you're always, you're always learning you know, we try to do this every Friday. We do a situational football deal on Friday in this room. Uh, we start our team meeting with that, um, where you show guys stuff that happened to other NFL teams or other college teams. You sometimes we use some high school examples, and you try to learn from it. Um, but you're always growing in that area. What's your conversation been like with Garrett this week, emphasizing the positive, but obviously yeah, talking uh, about the negative? Yeah, he, he and I have a, a really good relationship, so I don't have any problem, like, telling him the truth I told him right after the game I knew I, like I knew what happened and so you know I think like you know and I, I've said this about him before is like what makes him great is he has this exuberant energy right um I wish I had his energy right he he uh he doesn't have very many bad days um he's always upbeat he's bouncing around um but also you got to be able to limit that you know, and what makes him great also sometimes is his Achilles heel. You know, that's whether that's playing quarterback or that's celebrating a touchdown. You know, so like he did. He he did a lot of like without him we got no chance in that game. You know, he he made us go. You know, I, you can look at his stats. You were at the game. I mean, you saw it. You know, he played extremely well. Probably as good as we've played at that position here in a long time. Um and he still left some plays out there, but he played really, really well. Running the football, um, his decision-making, that's that's the best in a game situation his decision-making's been. We put a ton on him in the read game, in the run read game, and in the in the throw game. Um, just can't take your helmet off. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty simple. And that's one of those things, if, you, if we didn't cover that, then I'd be like, oh, you know, we didn't cover it. Um, but we covered that in preseason camp. Made a big deal out of it after CJ got the dumb penalty against Pitt, and it reared its head again. And because the truth of the matter is, and you never know for sure, but if they kick it, if we kick it from the 35, then that, they have a really hard time executing two plays. I know that you you mentioned that he has to know better. Do you have any opinions on the rule in general, though? Because that's been a debate a lot. That some people yeah, think I mean, get rid of that. here's the thing: the rule's the rule. You know, like the rule's the rule. Um, you know, I think I'd be really hypocritical to say after we were victim of the rule to complain about it. You know, like, I think that we probably need to do a better job letting the kids have fun in college football. You know, like, um, let, let's, I think we should focus on the stuff that really matters. You know, and that's something that I probably do a better job of as I get older is, like, focusing on what matters. Um, but I don't – the rule's the rule. And so, like, I don't want to complain about the rule – because the rules in, it's very clear. Uh, the officials, they they flag that rule all the time, and so we knew the rule and didn't abide by it, and we paid the price. Deal with um, Devin moving him around the way you guys did. I mean, he profiles as an outside guy, right? But you mm -hmm. saw something. What did you see 
to maybe. I just wanted to get him some more free runs, Mike. And um, he'll play inside and outside. Um, but I just I wanted to get him some more free runs off the ball, and I wanted to be able to play him on both sides. Um, and, and there was a couple things in the run game I thought he could help us on too, getting him closer to it. And so, because both our slots we've been playing are smaller, so I wanted to get bigger at that. Um, and he's smart too, so I, I thought he could handle it. You know, we worked on it a little bit during the bye week, and we're going to continue to do that. You know, I thought I thought that was positive for him, and we can we can grow his role in that. And then um, the number of players you guys used, I, the circumstances are what they are, but is mm -hmm. is that healthy, sustainable, and how close you may be to adding to that? Whether it's guys coming back or maybe guys who developmentally can give you some relief there. You talking about players or plays? Players. Yeah, yeah, it's on offense or defense. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think offensively we were about where we wanted to be. I think the the number of receivers that played is is about right right now. I think we played six. Um, and played two tight ends. Um, you know, the the running backs, we need to probably – we got to get that right. You know, as far as – I thought CJ played better. We got to get those other guys giving us something. Um, I think Jaheim's got a bright future. He did some really good things and some things where he missed some reads the other day. Um, we probably need, need to look at maybe shortening that, shortening that rotation just so guys can get into a rhythm. Um, but I think, yeah, I think as far as – Offensively, we can we can sustain. I think defensively, yeah. Um, you know, we we've got quality depth. They didn't play very well up front on uh, Thursday night. We got quality depth. We like depth in the secondary and linebacker. You know, so we got to be careful on 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 what we're doing back there. You know, how, how did you learn to be honest with yourself? Was it was it hard? I mean, most people rationalize. I mean, uh, yeah. You know, they say it wasn't my fault. You know. How, yeah. how, how, how did you teach yourself that lesson? Well, I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I just I, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean this bad. I mean, I don't mean. I'm like nobody. Um, I could give you. I could come up here and um, this way. I look at this job is like um, for better or worse. I'm responsible for it all. You know, I'm responsible for it all. And there's some things that I'm in really close proximity to, and then I make decisions every time. And there's some that I'm not. Um, but at the end of the day, like my name's on the program and I'm I'm responsible for it all. And I think that we talk a lot about our to our players about love. And, and that, that sometimes comes off as a soft word. I don't necessarily think it is. But to me, love is about is like there's two primary things when you talk about love. And it's it's telling people the truth and hold them accountable. All right. And so we want to be a program that fosters love, which means we tell our guys the truth and we hold them accountable. Well, I think you got to, as a leader, whether it's in football or anything, you've got to set that standard. And um, I have to make more decisions than anybody in the program, so I probably make more mistakes than anybody in the program. So I think you have to be transparent with that. Um, and I think you lose credibility if you're not. You know, I think, and whether it's with with your team or at home, whatever, like you lose credibility if you're not transparent. And so um, – we all make mistakes, and I think that, um, you know, where the root for that comes probably um, probably comes from my dad, who was a leader in a school system for a long time. You know, he's still working fifty some years, and and you know, and he he taught me early on that, you know, you make decisions, and and you live with them. And if you're right, you know, give other people credit, and if you're wrong, you take the blame. And and that's kind of the way I think about it. Neil, what does the pre-snap movement do for the offense? Yeah, so I think it, it, it depends on who you're playing, and and so what you do is you're trying to you're trying to get some looks pre-snap on on pre-snap alignments, and then what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the guys moving sideways, and then take people take their their eyes off their keys, and so that's what we do it. Um, you know, we pick and choose. The, you, some style, some styles of defense. When you play them, it doesn't matter because they're going to line up regardless. It doesn't matter what personnel grouping. It doesn't matter what you motion. They're going to line up. Um, but that's something that we've we've been doing for a while. We'll, we'll continue to do it. Similar tempo. Yeah, we we pick and choose. Yeah, pick and choose. We're not at a point. I, mean, I think how we're made right now is you know we're not going to be a team that that presses the gas all the time, but. You know, the other night we had success with it, and and we'll pick and choose like when we're going to do it. Just comments on um, Mike Gundy and just what you know about him and just his career because it's not 
not common to be at one place mm -hmm. as long as he's been. That's pretty rare these days. Yeah, I think the, the thing that sticks out with him is how he's done it is because if you look, there's been some times where he won it with all offense. You know, won, he's won 10 games like – six, seven, eight times, something like that crazy. Um, and he's done it for a really long time. Uh, he, uh, he's he got a really long bowl record going. Um, but he's won it scoring high and high scoring, you know, years and points. And he's won it being one of the top defenses in the country. So he's done it a bunch of different ways. Um, he's done it with a bunch of different staff that are rolled in in there. Um, and I think he's, he's, he's paid – he's stayed pretty true to himself. Um, and he's always – he's figured out ways to change, you know, and, think, and I, that's why I opened that up, talking about, you know, they've been, you know, rebounding from that uh, game against South has been really impressive. Just when you watch it and you're, like, looking at it from the outside, you're like, okay, you know, probably to the fans, they're like, oh, you know, they played a bad game. and they. But to me, I look at that and you know the inner workings of, like, how you get a team back, you're like, man, that's pretty impressive. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Thank you.